Yeah, welcome back to filler. <laughs> yeah, filler. We watch Persona 5 trailers and we don't really care. <laughs> Got some prisoners we We're just gonna do junk and talk about Persona 5, because why not? Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I really do... I, I, I still can't wait for it. It's gonna be fun. Like, I'm excited. I still, like I was saying off-camera, like... I just think it's, like, why a whole year for us? Like, I if it's, like, okay, if it's maybe even, like, February, January 2020, okay, fine. Like, I get that. But yeah. just not even having an estimate, like... Like, you could say, like, hey, give us the cold release date for Japan, which is kind of what they did, didn't they? Even in the first trailer, I thought. Because it said it went on sale. Or it was going to go on sale or something. Or was that a sale for Persona 5 base? I think that was base Jesus. Persona 5. Oh, uh, okay. D wow, look how fast they're moving. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, like... Um... I'm just excited for it, but, like... I don't know if it's... I mean, it'll probably be a lot of changes to the story, but at the same time, not enough to, I think, justify a bigger a localization date. Yeah, a longer time as long a time as they're saying it is in order for it to be brought over localized to the yeah US. and it's yeah. like i feel like it's just kind of at this point where it's like an it's a i don't want to say they're doing it to shit on american fans but at the same time it's kind of like an atlasy thing of like oh, we'll release it in the west Jeez. later like okay persona's as popular and as we it's can ever procrastinate been. on it we'll let them have scramble first <laughs> yeah yeah games we don't really care about or want <laughs> Yeah, Persona but, Warriors. We're totally yeah. excited. Yeah, I can't wait to use a... I can't wait to play a Warriors game using a series that makes almost no sense for it. <laughs> but, oh well. It, I guess it just be that way sometimes, but... Yeah, I think it's just Atlas being kind of that Japanese company that puts its... And, you know, I guess it's fair. I mean... Other companies kind of do it too. Like it, I remember, Xenoblade Chronicles One almost barely made it over to America. Move it. Yeah. And it was like, wasn't it a petition to localize that game? I don't exactly remember. I didn't follow Xenoblade. Yeah. Well, I remember it being like this big deal, and it was like, you know, it just happens sometimes with games. But I guess with the idea of, like, more generations now, basically, just, like, even the Switch now is not region locked anymore, is it? I don't believe so. But, yeah, again, a thing... Yeah, PS4 is not region locked. Yeah. Though, to get back on the topic of, like, translations and localizations and all that, I want to <laughs> talk about Persona 2. Innocent oh, Sin and Eternal Punishment. Why <laughs> was the PSP version of Innocent Sin ported to the U.S.? And not the P PSP version of Eternal Punishment. Instead, the PS1 version of Eternal Punishment is in the US, but not the PSP version. Yeah, and didn't the PS1 version of Eternal Punishment come over super late? And wait, yeah, the PS1 version of Eternal Punishment is the only thing that came over, right? And Innocent Sin didn't? But then when they remade the PSP version of Innocent Sin, that's what came over. And Eternal yeah. Punishment didn't come over. Which is, it's like, it's like, it, it, it's, it's extremely dumb, and I'm going kinda, to be kinda, playing the PSP fan translation, because for some reason Atlas isn't going to do it themselves for the PSP, because of multiple reasons, the main one being I want to stay consistent with the PSP, because that's the better version. Right, and that's only fair, but yeah, and that's also us letting you know that, hey... Eternal Punishment is going to be a fan translation. Take that what you will. Yeah, you and at, the, at this We're point, the fan translation least. itself isn't done. So it's going to be quite a but, while, even after we finish Persona 2 Innocent Sin. Right, but we're not the first persons to be doing a Persona 2 LP and taking a while to get to the other half of it. <laughs> <Just me. laughs> yeah. It's almost like we have our own map. Because you also are complaining about Persona 2 Eternal Punishment not coming over. <laughs> but it is dumb. It's like, and it kind of fuels what I'm saying about the Royal, where it's like, why is Atlas so... Why are they taking a year in order to port a game that should take a month? Right, that's already going to be releasing to Japan this year. I mean, I get... I'm not trying to be a selfish fan, but... At like, the very least, Atlas we're actually getting it in the West, unlike Eternal Punishment PSP. 
Yeah, and what I'm trying to say is, like, Atlas also is notoriously stingy about these things, in a weird way. So, I don't know, but... It's weird I mean, and least, dumb. Yeah, I mean, if Square Enix, the company that also was pretty stingy about localization dates, <laughs> King oh, of for most of its existence... Yeah, and that too. And it's like, if they, can, if they can start translating to a worldwide release date with Kingdom Hearts 3, and I'm assuming Final Fantasy 7 is going to get the same treatment. I like, hope why so. Can't Atlas... Yeah, I mean, Atlas is not as big as Square, but why can't Atlas just be like, hey, we understand, like, our, our Western audience now almost match. Almost match. Our English viewers also ma almost match Japan, which also. I want to talk. I want to just mention one of the people at one of the Persona 5 conferences just broke into perfect English and said, "I apologize to the English people for not understanding what everyone is saying during like an Atlas <laughs> live stream." Yeah, it's kind of goofy because it's like it's almost like the way the joke of people saying like, "I don't understand English in English." Like there are Spanish person saying, "I don't understand English," oh, but, but you're I, saying English. Eh? I, I think the funnier, funnier thing is that the person who was saying that was Japanese. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> okay, you know enough to say that, but you don't understand what I else think, we're talking about? I think it's more like he doesn't want to bother translating and or everyone else doesn't speak English. True. And I guess to be fair, it's like reading and saying are different. Yeah. Like, if we're talking in a different language, it's pretty easy to understand through vocal tracking but like when you're reading something it's it's almost different for most people which i guess that to be to counter argue myself a little bit maybe that's why it's taking a while to translate and and localize the royal i don't believe it because of how the how certain because of how anime dubbing and subbing and all that stuff works because it's like you get this new episode like right at this point in time and then the anime company shows it an hour later in the U.S. with English subtitles. It shouldn't be yeah. that difficult to translate something like that, especially if you have like already written Japanese con if, like if everything's already written and you just need to change it to English. It's not that much more difficult, I would say. I can see that, but I've also heard arguments for um, localization, especially in video games. That there's a lot of there's certain, especially with Atlas products. <laughs> Is that oh, yeah. there are a lot of things that need to be changed to be contextualized in English that you just don't understand? Won't in understand on other Yeah, so I guess. Yeah, so I, and Atlas is more notorious about that kind of stuff in their games, so I can understand that kind of. But at, at the same time, I don't know, like, Catherine Fullbody didn't take that long, isn't taking that long of a localization, is it? I don't Japan. Believe, I don't know. Would you like, would you mind checking on that? Yeah, I'll, I'll Listen, look that up while you're giving your building. side of it. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's weird. Also, just doing one of the worst kind of side missions in the game, where it's basically... You have a bunch of little things that you have to climb right next to, and there's 12 of them, and the map does not help much, if at all, on finding them. Yeah, the minimap in this game is not that good. That in this mission is just annoying. It's not even bad, it's just annoying and tedious. Because, I mean, right. there's always going to be, like, the uh, the bus mission. Yeah, we're never going to forget the bus, which went as bad, as awfully as I actually just kind of felt was coming on. Yeah, at least but, with these kind of well. missions, you can just look down at the building, and then when you see a red flashing light, you know that there's one right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the initial release date of Catherine Full Body was February of this year, and the localization is coming September 3rd, so it's not... Maybe we can argue that since Persona 5 The Royal is going to come out probably fall this year, that maybe it'll come out midway through spring next year. But still, it's like, I don't understand why this is taking that long for all of these games to come out. Especially these two, which are essentially kind of already trans. Yeah, kind of already done because of how they're yeah. remakes. And, you know, say what you will about the Catherine... Um, controversies and how they're changing things for the West. You can say whatever about that, but that's still not going to be a lot of work. 
So, I don't know, maybe it's just one of those things. Just Atlas things. Yeah, Atlas is... I mean, Atlas is no stranger to being more of a... Eastern company first, West whenever. We'll worry about the even people they, outside our country later. Yeah, even though they know that it's like their fan base is, for the most part, growing pretty well. Yeah, and consistently. And though, yeah, it's like, and even with Catherine, like, that's more of an obscure... Like obscure Atlas title, as opposed to Persona, which is basically alongside Shin Megami Tensei, their main focus. In more ways than one. What do you mean? <laughs> because Pers Persona is a spin-off of Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like Shin Megami Tensei as a whole has pretty much oh, been their wheelhouse, time. so I, I feel like that could SMT be SMT like, is Atlas's time. bread and butter. Yeah, even though they've split it now into Persona and SMT, for, which I guess I can kind of understand, because it's like, the SMT writing tropes and all that are very far different than Persona. They're two... They have similar Persona ideals. is SMT for casual people, while also having a calendar mm, system. I actually, I, well, I actually okay, kind of I wouldn't say casual, but more so... Less... Mm, I wouldn't more, even say it's more SMT. More sensitive. I get, uh, well, I wouldn't even say it's SMT, because I've always heard, I mean, I've never seen much of SMT, so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but I've heard the SMT is a much different game, ideally, like, plot-wise, even the way they're both written and the way they handle things are very different, so it's like, that's also why I can kind of see them removing the Shin Megami Tensei tag from Persona, because it's like, it's kind of become its own thing. Yeah, it's at, not this like, at this point, it definitely has. I mean, whack when it was Persona 1 and 2, they were very, they were very similar. similar, very, very similar. Yeah, but once they started with 3, they started writing Persona games as a different kind of series, so I understand it. The only thing they really share is names of demons and Oh gods. no, I accidentally killed one. <laughs> you are lawful neutral now. You were, or no, you are chaotic neutral now. How dare you. Chaotic good. No, I'm still good. But chaotic. Yeah, SMT references, ha 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 because we're talking about it. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. It's honestly the way I am playing Cole would be chaotic neutral. Yeah, and I guess another thing that I'd be interested about too about no, Alice is like me. we haven't even. I mean, it makes me wonder when Shimigami Tensei Five is even gonna come out because it's like probably their after Persona Five Royal and before Persona Six. Well, obviously before Persona Six, but <laughs> yeah, because I don't even think they're gonna think about Persona Six for a couple of years. Because, like, their tracker, they want to milk five for as much as it's going to be worth, of course, but. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, because it's interesting, it's like, are they going to be more, le like, are they going to be more generous with the localization of five, considering it was one of the Switch's biggest, like, reveal games when it, when it was announced, the Switch? I'd hope so, because, really, the localization of Atlas is not that good. Yeah, and it could start doing a little better since they're doing better in the West, and they know it, considering Nintendo basically trusted them with showing off Shin Megami Tensei V as a Switch reveal. Yeah, and then what was teased as SMT Cross Fire Emblem suddenly became uh, something completely different. And K-pop it stands. Yeah. You know I'm not wrong. <laughs> K-pop uh... with Fire Emblem stands. <laughs> that game is ridiculous though and I kind of appreciate the ridiculousness I wish but it yeah. was what it was advertised to be though Shin Megami Tensei plus Fire Emblem instead of K-pop with Jojo <laughs> yeah but when you say it like that it sounds amazing <laughs> K-pop with Jojo like I mean isn't that kind of what Jojo's turned into anyway but whatever um, I don't know. I don't watch yeah. it. I only know the memes. Oh, well, not... <laughs> of course. But, I mean, yeah, it kind of has, to be fair. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's kind of the same with, like, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Tekken Cross Street Fighter and all that junk. Or, Tekken Cross Street Fighter is what came out, right? And it was just kind of not good. And then... We never got the one that people were thinking were going to be good, which was Street Fighter Cross Tekken. So it's like, these crossovers kind of just 
they really are, don't have a track record of working that well anymore. Like, the only crossover I can genuinely imagine that worked super well, two of them are obviously Super Smash Brothers, and, you know, which, which is what we love, and Kingdom Hearts, really. I mean, say what you will about Kingdom Hearts as a series, like it, hate it, whatever, it's successful. Nowadays, I would argue something a bit different about Kingdom Hearts, because how it doesn't have Final Fantasy anymore for whatever reason. Which is stupid. Uh, Kingdom Hearts was built on a foundation of being Disney cross uh, Final Fantasy. Square. Yeah, you're right in a sense, but I can't dive into it without spoiling things that are important, so I'm not going to do that. All that I'm going to say but, is that in Kingdom Hearts 3, there's no Final Fantasy stuff. Well, yeah, and I, I, I respect, I agree, because you're right, and it's a fact, but at the same time, there are aspects of this conversation that, again, I can't, I can't say, because it's a spoiler. So, unfortunately, you're right, but I can't dispute it. Then again, I can dispute it in a way of like this, where it's like, who knows what the DLC is going to bring. Yeah, that is true. I do hope that some Final Fantasy stuff is added to it with the DLC, yeah. but I doubt even, there will be any. It's probably true, but Nomura isn't awesome, awesome more of this bullshit. Yeah. This, but wait. This, this is a side oh, okay, I thought it was a bad act. Yeah, I thought it said bad wait. I was like, what? Am I stuck? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, good. You were swimming there for a minute, man. Like, swimming in the goo. Also, it got rid of the, the bad stuff. Wow. Um, yeah, what I was trying to get at was like, because even Nomura has come out in interviews, Tetsuya Nomura has come out in interviews and said he regrets, he, regret, he regrets it, like he regrets not putting any Final Fantasy because he thought it was ready to move on and he thought his characters were ready to stand on their own, blah, blah, blah. And then he came out after 3 came out and was like, oh, that was a mistake and fans were <laughs> annoyed. Yeah. Oops. Oh, well. So it makes me think that he's going to rectify it with the DLC. I, I mean, if that's what, what you're saying, if everything is as you say it is, then I do think that that's likely possible. I'm not gonna put yeah. any. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's concrete. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna say it's concrete. I'm not even saying it's concrete either because we just don't know anything about the DLC yet, other than little tidbits. But I do know for the fact that he said in an interview he kind of, and I don't say he regrets it, regrets it, but like, well, I mean, the intent of what he said means, it, it basically means I regret it, like. He's like, oh, I thought the fan, you know, I thought my characters would stand on their own and the it's, fan base. I think would be it's ready not like it. he just is straight up regrets doing it. I think it's more like I shouldn't, like I thought that this was a good idea, but now that I have the hindsight, fans. it's not. Yeah, I thought this was, I thought Kingdom Hearts was ready to take that plunge, and it's like, yeah, the fans kind of didn't. He he basically said like, because I'll agree with him. His characters on their own are decently developed enough to be able to be. Yeah. Important enough. I still but think that if you also, have the whole Disney thing, you should also have the Final Fantasy, because then what's the point of Kingdom Hearts if it isn't a Disney cross Final Fantasy crossover? If you still I'm have agreeing one with or you, the yeah, other. Like what, what I'm, yeah, what I was getting ready to say was like, I think more so, of, and I think even he can even acknowledge it. Yeah, I think he even acknowledged it. Cause I remember, I'm remembering what he said, and it feels like he acknowledged this. Where it's like, okay, yeah, your characters are well developed and stand on their own. Wow. <laughs> I'm not doing yeah, the you're... evil side mission. <laughs> right. But your characters are well developed enough to stand on their own, but that's not the point. That's not the point of Kingdom Hearts. Like, you missed yeah. the point of the plot. Because fe I feel like he thinks all the Final Fantasy, the streets, like the fans of Kingdom Hearts, like the Final Fantasy because it did the characters weren't strong, strong enough enough, and that's not the point. Like, it was just cool to have that sure crossover. I appreciate that. And it's like taking that crossover out is kind of missing the point of what fans love about Kingdom Hearts to begin with. Yeah. So, that's just my take on it. So that's why I kind of hope they rectify it. Yeah, I hope so too. Because if we get, like, a uh, Disney character and then also Sora in Smash Brothers, we'll have the true Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> yeah, because we'll have Cloud. <laughs> Oh yeah, and this is an interesting hero mission because it's. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but I can't believe Smash Brothers has clouds and Kingdom Hearts has cloud, and Kingdom Hearts Three doesn't. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's nuts. 
Okay, your audio sounds a bit different than it did before. For whatever reason. Oh, it's because I went I, I went into a, a different room. I'm sorry. Oh, that's what it is. Am I better now? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds better. But yeah, it's like I can't believe Smash Brothers has King Cloud and Kingdom Hearts 3 had nothing. Like, that, I can't believe... Like, what? If you asked me when Brawl came out and Kingdom Hearts 2 was the big thing, like... If that was ever possible, I'd be like, you're nuts. Like, if I told you Kingdom Hearts 3 won't have Cloud, but Smash Brothers will. Yeah, like, would you believe- and, and PlayStation All Star Battle Royale still had neither. So fuck. <laughs> Screw you, Sony. Said Square Enix. <laughs> I mean, it's kinda true. Considering Kingdom Hearts went multi-platform, and I th is Final Fantasy VII Remake a PS4 exclusive? Nice work, Cole. Or P okay, Sony exclusive, nice. to be fair. I think it is. I'm not sure. It might be PC, too. Yeah. But I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't bank platform. on PC coming around anytime soon, because look how long 15 took. <laughs> I mean, there are also the ports of the older games, but those are also ports of older games. Shh. We don't talk about... We don't talk much about those. I have Final Fantasy VIII on Steam for some reason. Of all the Final Fantasy, it's good, 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 because you're not gonna get it on the Switch. I also already have Final Fantasy VII on PS4. And 4 on the DS. And PSP. Oh, so all you're missing is 6 and you'll have all the good Final Fantasy games. Yeah, I'm, I'm neutral on six. I, I, yeah, I, it's it's not bad. I'll say that. It's just that I don't really feel. It's definitely one of those. I think it's definitely one of those games that is so good that you can't like, even if you don't care for it, you can't say it's a bad game. I was not going. To, uh, yeah, I'll agree with that. It's not bad. I just find the story yeah. underwhelming. I think that. I guess that's fair. Like, I like four or five and six. All. Almost the same amount? I think that's a really good trio of games. Yeah. Don't you mean you Final Fantasy? Give it I mean, don't you mean Final Fantasy's 2, 3, 2, 3, and 1, five? 2, and 3? Oh, no, you mean 1, 2, and 3? Because 3 was 6 over here. And then 7 happened. Yeah. And everything was okay again. Over here, Final Fantasy 3 was actually Final Fantasy 6, and Final Fantasy 2 was actually Final Fantasy 4. We didn't get Final Fantasy 5. Yeah. Well, technically, well, technically, we didn't. If Final five. Fantasy V came over here, we'd have Final Fantasy two and a half. Right. Like, <laughs> but yeah. Also, by the way, we haven't seen uh, Malcolm X in a while. <laughs> yeah. Actually, if you follow through with his kind of side mission thing, which is basically just catch the TV whenever it's on, he actually mm -hmm. gets gunned down at the end because he's like he finds out way too much, and then the first sons come in and shoot him up. Oh wow, I actually didn't know that, because I never really kept up with it. I only did that on, half on accident, because it's just like, I'm going through the mish, the city, oh hey, here's the TV on, I might as well see where this goes. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, back to non-related Final Fantasy talk. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, you gotta give them even credit for 7 through 9, because even if people are polarized on 8 to the point of, like, oblivion, like, 7 and 9 are great Final Fantasy games as well. Yeah. Eight and it's like is very yeah. divisive for multiple reasons, yeah. and we'll probably get to that on the eventual eight commentary. Twenty years from now. <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to play eight, even though I have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure that out, but yeah, we'll with seven and nine. Years. Too. Yeah, once we're like a fireball of nothing. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, yeah. Uh, and then with 10, it's like, start, because 10's pretty decent. I don't love 10, but like, it's 10 is good, me, but, but I heard drags in quite a few places. It does, and it's like, 10 is a decent, good game that I can acknowledge that, but it just doesn't vibe with me very well. And it's like, 11 was an MMO, so. And that's, you know, all MMOs live forever, pretty much at this point. Most of them have their niche audiences that stay around till the end of time. Yeah, but. honestly... Since I am actually a Final Fantasy XIV player, which is also an MMO Final Fantasy, I just wish that one of the things that came with the Final Fantasy XIV subscription was a free subscription for Final Fantasy XI so that I could actually try it out. 
Yeah, well, they're supposed to be remaking it for phones, but that's a different topic entirely. Oh yeah, and this... But, okay, going back to the game for just a second here, this is an interesting mission, because it's basically you talk to the NPC and he's secretly an enemy in disguise with an ambush. Uh, yeah, that's actually a pretty good sub... Uh, even though it's annoying, and the combat in this game is kind of annoying. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say annoying, just, just repetitive. True, but that's a good subvert of expectations. Yeah, it's an, it's it's a neat change of pace. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, well, what I was getting at with 7, like 10, like, starting with 10, Final Fantasy as a series kind of went downhill in a weird way where it's like, 10 was decent and good, like, and a lot of people like it, and it's fair. Like, I think it's probably one of the last good ones. And then 12 kind of has its fan base, and then some people who don't like it. 12 is a feel... very niche Final Fantasy. And then 13's hall Hallway Simulator. Yeah. Yeah, and then 13 is, for the most part, disliked. Because <laughs> even though, like, well, 13 2 is pretty good, but, like, it's the only part of that trilogy of games that's, like, Eh. It's like they tried to make another seven, and it's like it didn't no. work. Yeah, it's just yeah, and it's like female cloud, and and basically it's all that and it's, mm, didn't really work out that well because these characters. I mean, some of the characters are decent, but like everything you built around with this thirteen universe is like you can't yeah. really do all that much more with it. Mm -hmm. Like even versus thirteen, which became fifteen, had a much more interesting universe compare in comparison. Yeah. Now to go back to the game for just a little bit before we end this filler part, the new ability they got by doing the hero missions, which is called uh, Overload Burst for Hero, basically allows mm -hmm. you to charge up a blast, and whatever you shoot chains electricity to other things. It's a good, uh, it's like a good evolution of your base ability to the just shoot things. The only real bad thing about it is it requires charge time. And yeah, that, but that's the one reason that I don't really use it, because why use this long charging ability when you could just use your default lightning bolts that are way faster and do about as much damage? True. I think once you start cutting down enemy numbers, you can kind of use it in and out. But when you have, like, the entire army against you, it's kind of a bad idea. Like, right here. Oh, what? Oh. Yeah, I was about to say, like, right here is a pretty good, because you're not getting, oh, well, that's another downside to it is you can hit NPCs with it. Yeah. I mean, you can hit NPCs with pretty much everything, though, to be fair. True, they are a bunch of dumbasses, but... Oh, so you should probably end this part soon, because it's been about half an hour. Though I w mm -hmm. I'll do just one more of these, and then the end it. Pumping poison into yeah. Because we're a hero? Question mark? Yeah, this is just another one of those. Say, hey, get rid of the black tar on the water tower thing. Man, I'm really tired of being a hero, where I just keep getting black cum all over my face. Ugh. Ugh. Man, what are you eating? Mushrooms? Mushrooms and then hey. some. <laughs> Very black mushrooms. Oh, cool, I accidentally did a stunt. Don't you just love when you accidentally do something cool? What was that for? Hello? What? Did you not hear me? What was what for? Oh, the pause. I did think I did. Oh, yeah, just accidentally pausing. Oh, man. <laughs> 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 it's so yeah, it's like, hey, Empire City, here's your gracious, amazing hero falling off a building with black tar on his face. TMZ would be all over it. Here's your hero. All right. Yeah, yeah we're going to end the I part think... here now that we're got a significant chunk of this done on this area here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're going to end the part here. Thanks for watching, we'll see you guys on the next filler part where we... Actually, I don't know what we'll talk about next time. We'll figure that out as it comes. Maybe, maybe the E3 stuff. Maybe, it just depends on when we come back to this. Anyway. Yeah. Good night. See you guys next time.